the middle of last split when they started absolutely dominating and winning so many games time after time. I have to see if this is the start of that run for them. G2 get rid of Rise and the Zillion. H2K remove the Heimerdinger and the Talia. I'm very happy to see the Heimerdinger ban. I was actually going to bring that up. I wasn't sure if H2K were going to do it, even though it has looked like Hyarnin's best champion. There are a lot of other characters that are pretty good at the moment. Kai'Sa being the other one, they have 20 seconds. It's not going to be that. So uh, G2 maybe first pick the Braum here to set up for that carry comp. It's quite possible. That's I'm what they've done in all their I'm other games. I'm a little bit sad because I talked to Wadid the other day and he said, you know what, I'll do Medic, I'll play Nocturne support for you. And now and Nocturne's bad for HK. How removed, did they know? They removed the ability to play Nocturne support, but there is the brawn that you were talking about. This carry composition, this funnel composition is already looking in the works for G2. So there's two different things H2K can do right now. One, pick Kai'Sa. Do it. Okay, we don't even have to oh, go into genius. the other ones. Excellent. So I was going to say, get that away from Perks, and then also pick some early playmaking. And now G2, they have to decide. Does Perks play another carry? Master Yi, we've seen Graves paired with the Braum as well. Or they can actually just pivot and put Braum support and play standard. There's a lot of different options for them, as you say. If it's the Lucian, you'd expect it to be a standard Braum support. Could be Lucian mid. I don't We've know what to Perks expect anymore, Medic. Past. That's true. That's true. I think perhaps I'm predicting a little bit too much, but... We will wait and hopefully this draft will deliver as much excitement as we've had across Ooh. the rest of the tournament. There is Aatrox locked in as well for G2. Now, Wanderers played that one time so far this split. It has been a champion that has gotten a lot of bans thrown his way, thrown a lot of the ways of the other top laners in the league as well. H2K now, though, what do they take against it? One of the picks I actually really like is the Jax up against the Aatrox. Unfortunately, it could just be the Dr. Mundo. Oh, let's do it. Oh. It's been picked in a few other regions. I really like oh, this. Ender, All right. You have been absolutely on point nice. with your predictions today. You said yeah. Kaiser was going to get picked, then the Jacks, you're bringing it in. Now, what what is it about we, while we go through the second phase of bands? We've got a little bit of time. Why is it that the Jacks appeals to you here into the Aatrox? So very quickly, uh, Aatrox and Jacks are both giant balls of stats that like to auto attack each other. Jax has better stats from his ultimate. He also has the E to dodge away from those auto attacks. It's a very strong trading tool. It does take a little while to come online, similar to the Aatrox as well, but he should be winning out in the side lane later on in the match. Okay, so the stat ball is in H2K. So many stats. At the moment. The score line, however, big stats. <laughs> big stats. The scoreline, however, in favor of G2, because they're 3-0 and H2K 0-3, yet to pick up a win here in Summer Split. They will remove the Irelia from the pool. G2 looking for their next ban. Fiddlesticks in that bottom lane, something we've seen commonly across the last few days. So my next prediction is going to be that G2 have pivoted away. They're not going to play a hyper carry for perks. My main reasoning behind that is that Kai'Sa is one of the weaker laning marksmen. She's very exploitable in those early levels. And Lucian Braum, that's kill lane. You land one Winter's Bite, Lucian dashes forward, and you look for blood. I'd really like to see that out of Hyarnin and Wadid, who've taken on a little bit more responsibility, I think, so far this split. That's the question, though, for Hyarnin and Wadid. Is it that they're taking on more responsibility, or is it that they're playing easier lanes to play? They don't have to play AD carries anymore. If you play Heimerdinger Fiddle, you push the lane, you walk away. You, you shore up your weakness as G2 without actually having to make your players any better. Exactly. I, I, I will I'll take that, you know. I'm not saying that's the case. They're a little easy, sure. But I think the key difference is that G2, in their first game of the split, played through Hyarnin and Wadid in the bottom lane. Really gave them resources to carry on those two more unique picks back at that time. But I know this is a pick that Foxy on the desk is going to love here. Shook on Lee Sin, though. This isn't a player that you usually go, wow, put him on the playmakers. He's usually a facilitator for the team. But now he's got to be getting in the back line and making stuff happen. I have to remember, it is his most played across the course of his career. He's played it 43 times with a 56% win rate. So, yes, he okay. hasn't played it recently, but he played That's it That's a, a hyper Lucian, I yes. believe. So, your prediction was wrong. I'm sorry, and everyone gets one wrong in the end. I, I really didn't think they were going to go Lucian hyper in the jungle. Hyper Lucian in the jungle with the Karma, with the Alistair, and the Braum to help him out. That is a a very heavily funneled strategy on towards perks. H2K looking at the Tom Kench as their final pick here. Could go for the Morgana as well to try and get a little bit of uh, CC control for themselves, and that's what it's going to be. There they go. So the reason why you take the funnel comps into H2K, these guys struggle in the early game. We saw Fnatic do it to them 
yesterday. Now G2 have their opportunity again because against this composition, you have to be hyper aggressive in the early game. All of a sudden, we're going to be looking at Shook. He's on the Lee Sin. He's got to be finding Perks and Yankos in their jungle, invading there with Selfie as well to make stuff happen. Because if and you don't, it doesn't work. It's been one of the key weaknesses for H2K as, as well, has been that yes. disconnect between Shook and the rest of his team. Sometimes he'll invade when his team's gone back to base. Sometimes he won't relieve pressure on his lanes when he needs to. They need to shore up whatever is happening there communication-wise to actually make themselves on the same page. And the one concern I have for HK in this draft is that you look at a lot of their champions, it's much more on the scaling side of things. The Kai'Sa in the bottom lane, Vladimir, Jax, all these champions really turn on at two or three items. So it's all up to Shuck. Shuck and maybe they can get Promise Q on the Morgana going for some invades because you do not want to stall out against three supports and a Lucian. That man is going to be deadly with six items. He is. He doesn't even need to get there. We saw the Kaiser, usually about level 16, probably about the 20 minute mark. That's when she really came online. Lucian, we're looking at that three, four item point really for the facilitation. Do have to remember that shields were nerfed on patch 8.12. So the Karma Shield won't be as yeah. strong. Ardent Sensor won't be as good as well. Removed 2% uh, off the heal and shield power there. Uh, power there. But uh, Perks has shown us very often that he can dodge around skill shots in the middle of a fight. Gonna jump onto the rip for G2 and uh, H2K's last game of the week. H2K trying to find a win somewhere here in Summer Split. Do not want to repeat their performance in Spring. It's been a tough couple of, couple of games for H2K, especially because they had such a good spurt at the end of the Spring Split and things just have not gotten off to that same great start. I already like this out of Shook. So I, alongside Fox, who are both Lee Sin players, and already I see that Rejuvenation Bead start out of the Lee Sin. He doesn't lose much health in the jungle, and the Reju Bead lets him get into that team at. He's going to be trying to power farm and probably counter jungle camps away from perks here, because that is one of the great things to do against the Hyper Carry Strat. Invade, take their camps, and all of a sudden, they can't be miles and miles ahead of you. And one of the reasons I really like Lee Sin at the moment as well is he's re received consistent buffs across oh, yeah. the last couple of patches. He's been graves. The, yeah, the graves Multiple buffs effect. in a row. He got buffed on 8.11 where they uh, increased his passive rejuvenation of energy. Then he got buffed on 8.12 where they increased his w, uh, decreased his W cooldown and increased the base damage on his E. He now gets cooldown reduction on the second part of all of his spells as well. So overall... Lee Sin is in a much stronger spot than he was in Spring Split. And this is a new look. The Funnel Strat invading at level 1, the power of the Braum. We see so many teams walk into the enemy jungle, and Shook's not even getting at least oh, this is bad. He's not going to see it coming. That is the worst oh, no. timing. Shook in the dark. No, Maybe no, sends Shook. something. Yankos there. Exhaust comes out as well. Looking for the final shot. Concussive blows. Perks is going to be given this kill. Shook with a good smite, but it's not enough. First blood to Perks. Add insult to injury. Wonder, Wonder's like, yeah, you guys got this. I'm going to go farm top lane. It's totally fine. Perks, 4 and 5 on Lucian, but usually he's playing Lucian in the mid lane. This, you don't even have a laning phase. You just go kill the enemy jungle at level 1 and snowball from there. Yeah, that's a pretty good start for G2. Uh, it wasn't a good start for Perks when he played Lucian originally. He uh, had a very bad record to start off, but now has started to get a few of these wins under his belt. We'll be looking to add a fifth here as well. Oh, no. So he, should just, he doesn't know what's coming. I, I feel for him, man, because where's his top laner? His top laner should be in that tri brush, spotting out the invade coming. He did everything in his power, but I think using the smite there was actually a mistake. Now he doesn't have the smite for helping him on the blue buff. He's going to lose so much HP off that, not have the red, and not be able to have an impact for quite some time now. You can see as well, Vladimir not the best at pushing lanes early on. Means that Perks and Yankos can just come across. Looking for the blow. Oh, the blows here, the flash away. <laughs> Selfie trying to get to safety, but Perks and Yankos just force him back. And Perks already in a very strong position. See, it's funny too, because I was like, man, Lucian Braum in the bot lane, that's kill lane. You can, you know, make plays happen and look for kills. But uh, with a red buff, Lucian is even stronger and he might find Shook again, who has to ward off out because he's got no flash. Yep, did get the Scuttle Crab. Yeah. So that's one benefit yeah. for him. Top side Scuttle Crab went across to Perks. He's now going to go to his red buff. Still has the blue buff. Still has the entire bot side jungle. And Selfie cannot push out the lane quickly enough to actually do anything about it. So let's look at where H2K may have a strength. Bot lane, Sheriff is on this Kaiser. If he can get to two items, we have seen Kaisers take over the game in the past. It's true, and, and Sheriff should have a pretty free laning phase. When you go against the Karma Alistar, 
you, you expect to beat them, they're not really going to be able to do much to you unless they get some assistance from the rest of their team. So scaling up is an option for Sheriff in the bottom lane, but you compare a Kai'Sa on two items to a level 16 Lucian on three and a half, and that's where things get a little bit uh, out of their favor. I do just want to say, as a support main, I've played Alistair for a very long time, right? since about season two. And this Alistair skin tilts me no end. What? Right? No, 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 no. It's an amazing skin. I love the skin. It looks gorgeous. The, the splash art is are amazing. sick. The yeah, splash art is sick, but you can only get it through gemstones, right? I love Mukau Alistair, but now all I see is people using this skin and taunting me because I don't have enough gemstones. I don't get enough chests to get this Alistair well, skin. Well, And I'm yearning for it. I mean, it's, it's like... No, I get it. I need it. Maybe, maybe you should become a pro player so you get everything unlocked. That's my plan, eventually. How's it going? Uh, not, not that well. Uh, Diamond 3 is Like moment. Shook's early uh, game? Like Shook's early game, indeed. <laughs> but, uh, at the moment, things are looking very good for G2 as well. Sure, they'll be picking up all the chests they can and all the CS they can onto perks as well. Yet to back, sitting at 37 farm. Uh, getting himself a blue buff and a grump as well. All by his lonesome, getting the experience, getting everything that he needs. Then he'll want to go back to base because that first purchase is going to be a whopper. He's sitting around 2k gold at the moment. Be working towards very likely the warrior enchantment as Shook. He's looking for a gank in the top side of the map with Wonder. Well, that's a ball of stat hitting a ball of stats and Wonder uses his flash to get out of the stats fight that is up cheating. towards the top side. Is that cheating? I didn't realize. I think so. It's very dishonorable. But that's then true. again, so is bringing your jungler, so yeah. I cut Wonder some slack. If it's a 1v1 and then he flashes away, that's dishonorable. But let, yeah, let me get this straight. Jax and Aatrox are two of the most honorable champions in the game. Yes. Jax won't even use a real weapon. It's, it's true. He's, he's, he's somewhat of a fool, but he's honorable at least. Trustworthy. It's the same if, uh, you know, if you ever got into a fight with Vedius. Vedius would not use a real weapon against you because he's too strong. He should. Did you see that sumo video? Yeah, that, that was a bit of a disgrace Yikes. in all honesty. But let's have a look at H2K on the other side of the rift to G2 at the moment. They have not had the best of starts to this split. Their strength in laning phase hasn't been great. Their objective control has been diabolically bad as well. Rift Hell is only seventh, only got one. Dragons, only getting 18% of the Dragons in the game, not got a Baron yet as well. They are not the team that you expect to have early game control. Yeah, and it is what you expect when you see a team that goes 0-3 at the start of EU LCS, but you can't play that slowly against this style of composition. Shook has finally gone back to base, he's gotten himself that team at, so I'm still looking at him. He was slowed down, but he's not out of the game just yet. Top lane is vulnerable without a flash. Invading the jungler with Selfie. Now that Selfie has level six on the Vladimir two could be an option. I just need to see some movement out of them. Otherwise, it's rough. Okay, so I'm gonna, you, you kind of gave me the big picture there. You yeah. said, this is what I kind of want H2K to do. This is the idea. I want you to be specific. I want you to tell me exactly what you would do right now if you were in H2K's shoes to stop this funnel comp from working. I need Shook to come to the mid lane on this next wave, help Selfie shove out the lane. That way, they get lane priority, and then they need to become best friends and walk into the enemy jungle, but Selfie can't 1v1 this. Emo play comes out from Selfie, gonna pop the oh. second ball as well at the end. Yanko's only there in the last Selfie. Second. Selfie survives, it's fine, he knew he judged it. He had no flash either, that was, that. that was very close. I mean, my heart, you know, it's fluttering just a little bit, but there you see it. The, the whole plan is lost because what you need to do against the style of composition, you need to work so well as a team. Five members on HK need to pressure in and shook. To level five, to level seven, this is rough. And Perks jumping in, the Morgana binding one land as well, but Yankos is still behind. If they can somehow manage to catch out the Braum in one of these fights, they can shut him down. We saw Selfie and Sheriff coming into the mid lane to try and push out the wave as well, but still, Final strategy, perfect working order here for G2. We haven't really talked much about the top lane. There's about an 8 CS advantage for Wonder, but really, this game rests on the shoulders of Perks. Absolutely. Absolutely it does. And HK's best chance to really punish him was before that first recall, because that's when the support is underleveled. The carry has not spent his gold. And because of that brilliant invade call from G2, they're able to shut him down and really stop it. But now, level 4 Braum. This is very disrespectful. 
Selfie there, shook from the side, but doesn't go I in. I think and... you take that. Oh, Look, I... you have this huge level lead. You can kick him underneath the tower, burst him with Selfie. The only thing that was stopping HK, I think, was the lack of the Hemo Plague on the Vlad. But you have that was flash. it. It doesn't matter. You I kick know. him under your I tower. Know. Shook is just not on the same page. You have to do it. Aggressive enough for his team. We've seen other members of this team step up. Selfie, Sheriff, across the last few weeks have stepped up. But at the moment, it feels like Shook is just not being the jungler his team needs. Here we go, though. Now Selfie has that lane priority out of the mid. Shook is on vision, but this is the, the style of play we need to see out of him. I think Raptor Camp becomes very, very valuable. Oh, no. Okay, so that didn't work. Shook, new game plan. It appears to be dive bot lane, but this is rather risky. We did call out, doesn't have the unbreakable will yet. Here comes the teleport in from nice. Speedy as well. There's the flash kick. Sheriff jumps in as well with the Void Assault. That's one. Now they look for Hyanen underneath the tower. Smitty J can't land the counter strike, but Hyanen still under the tower is going to get caught out. Smitty will solidify this kill. Great stuff from H2K. Perks is in there. Perks is coming in for the fight. Ignite down. Perks jumped on by Smitty. Jumps away. Gets one. Ooh. Can't quite land the bind. So so close. That's what we want to see from H2K, though. Make the play. Exactly the move we needed out of them. Wonder didn't have TP. Smitty J did. Shook, it was all planned to let the rebuff, uh, red buff reset. Makes his way into the bottom lane, and now they've got the first turn. This is beautiful. This is perfect for that. A little bit more impetus, a little bit of a faster tempo here for H2K. They get a thousand gold lead. It's not monumental, but it's something. And Shook is in this bush. Excellent insect right about now. Ward hops forward. Flash kick into the delivery system there with Sheriff. And Yarn, and he's just a lone karma under the turret. Doesn't stand much of a chance. While that was all happening, Perks, I mean, uh, respect to him to jump over this wall, knowing the absolute limits of this champion to turn it around and actually escape with his life. Exhaust perfectly timed by Yankos Ooh. as well, because I think Smitty J so would close. have taken him out otherwise. But that's so much more what you want to see from H2K. However, is it too little too late? I feel that might be a little bit early for me to say. We're only 10 minutes into the game, but H2K are still even in gold with G2, where G2 are happy just to wait for a couple more items on this Lucian. It's not too late for H2K. They need to use this momentum they just created out of the bottom lane. And now they've got the top, they're duo on the top side. They can use that to their advantage. Right now, G2 are going to take that Infernal. That's fine for H2K. The stats on the Infernal are going to pay off later in the game when they should lose against this Lucian anyways. Now it's time to get the Herald, take gold, because that is how you beat the strategy early. Problem I'm starting to see though, Smitty J teleported away from the lane, now is a level behind Wonder and about 30 CS in the hole as well. That ball of stats for Wonder is getting bolstered by the Tiamat, by the Jerome's Fist as well. We need to see Smitty J really get back into that lane. With this coming across here, caught out with the Binding, teleport coming That's in as TP. well. Shook smites the Rift Herald, Sheriff jumps away, TPU, Shook can just jump across this wall if he's got the safeguard. Here comes Perks as well, caught with the Binding, the kick away from Shook, but the Winter Spike will land in the end. The Glacial Fisher used, and Wonder gets the kill. I'm gonna call Worth for H2K. Obviously, didn't want to lose Shook in that fight, but they did pick up the Rift Herald with him. That's why he had to go down. He had to stick around to grab that for himself. And now, money going back into the pocket of Smitty J. He couldn't TP in this time, but for the 1v1, he's gonna be all right. It's Smitty J's birthday today as well. Happy so birthday, Smitty J. A, a lot of presents for him down as he collects the gold from those minions, and a bit of a present as well here for G2 as they spotted H2K doing the Rift. Home. I mean, it's just really good game sense from them. They just took the Infernal. They know H2K is going to try to respond on the other side of the map, and they have the TP advantage. They can't quite get what they wanted onto Sheriff. He doesn't even have to use his Flash to escape right there, and that means a lot in the long run because that means Sheriff can get out. Going to be a little sad because Shook was dead to rights there regardless. But still, overall, I think a good, good effort from H2K and worth. Yep, actually making plays on the map, I think, is a very strong position for them to be in. Let's have a look at where we stand in terms of items, though. Luden's Echo completed on Hyanen. We did has the Moby boots. Got Skirmisher's Saber with the Warrior Enchant finished on Perks as well. So he is really scaling up 2-0-1 on that Lucia. Still a little ways off for H2K to hit their first items. and. You can see right now G2 want to take control over the map. If they have the shoving mid lane and can rotate top, all of a sudden Sheriff and Promise Q, they can't push forward. They do not have a turret up there, and Shook isn't on the right side of the map to protect him. I think he needs to get up top side right now because his dual lane is in a terrible position. They can't even farm. You have to step a long way back. No vision as well for them, as we say, up towards that top side. Yankos now 
Roaming around by himself a little bit more. Level 7 on the Vorm gives him that extra degree of safety. Perks has a two-level advantage over safe Selfie here, who has just hit that level uh -oh. 10. Pops the Sanguine Pool and the Hemo Plague straight away. Hyanan on his way as well, but Perks and Jisoo should just settle for the tower here. We'll be able to secure it and share Oh it. my god! There's a lot of damage from Hyanan with the loot and Zekin. Is that legal? Yes. Okay. Cool. I mean, that was... Uh, you playtested it. <laughs> yeah, did they even test this stuff? Insert broken champion here. <laughs> Ask if we test it. Probably. Probably did. But uh, Sheriff, he's testing it live and in action. That he is. Uh, interesting, as, as we do have a tiny bit of downtime here, I do want to ask you about funnel comps, because you were a playtester in North sure. America before you came over to be a, a caster here. Thank you so much for coming, obviously. But did you see funnel comps in, in your playtesting? Was it a, a strategy that you guys actually tried out and tested around with? So I wouldn't say we ever went the, the maximum like we're seeing in pro play right now, but there, there were definitely strategies where you try to funnel the scuttle crabs into the carry, so you'd have a strong mid laner or a strong AD carry whenever it, it spawned on that side of the map. You would help them out to get that, and that was a, was a pretty viable strategy. You know, with the uh, random RNG, it meant if you had a strong mid lane jungle 2v2, you could do that, but uh, never qu quite got to the point where we were having them uh, farm all the jungle and everything in between. Yeah, pros always find a way to uh, adapt. To ruin everything. <laughs> yeah. yes. I remember Transcendence where you just built pure cooldown reduction. That was bad. That was very bad as well. But we are in a pretty fun meta to watch at the moment as Shook uh -oh. comes down towards this bottom lane. Kanan there with the Ludens teleport coming in. The Wonder jumps forward. Shook comes in from the side. The kick, the knockback. That's a lot of damage onto him as Sheriff comes in to try and solidify that final Here kill. But the rest Perks. of G2 are on their way. As you say, Perks behind the tower by himself. But it's going to knock himself across the wall as well. And Perks jumps forwards. Mini J with the engage. Oh! Oh! But the knock of the combo from G2 is unstoppable. The stun on Sheriff and G2 say thank you very much. HUK, they're trying to make the play but G2 punish. Perks is level 12 and running them over. You aren't even DPs into the top lane because they want all the resources they can possibly get. Such good play from G2. At the start of this, you think maybe Wonder's overextended, but the follow-up is perfect. But this is what I'm talking about. Wonder, he's pushing up in the bottom lane, so Hyarnan follows him to protect him when he moves forward. And Aatrox just buys so much time with that revive passive. Just puts H2K in a terrible position. They had no idea, they had no vision telling them Perks and what did were on the way. And were absolutely punished. That double knockup combo was beautiful. Nasty. Hannah picks up the kills in the end, double for him. And we talked about it earlier. We said this was the weak point of G2, their bottom lane. Hyanan specifically, AD carries last split, didn't really perform. This split, he is playing so much better. And you can say, it's just a funnel comp. It's easy. It is never easy to play at the highest level. Oh, baby. Landing onto self oh. and Promise Q, and Promise Q gets cult. Another Perks. kill for G2. My word, two kills. Shook died at the end of that somehow. Whoa. And they're going to get a turret at the same time. It's a 16-minute inner mid lane turret. And I'm not quite sure. G2 might not be done because there's not a whole lot of wave clear for H2K. Yeah, basically nothing H2K can do here. Smitty J's not even coming to help defend the inhibitor. 16 minutes in and 30 seconds. G2 are going to take this inhib down. A 6,000 gold lead. And they have truly come online as a composition. And H2K have stalled out. All right, G2, they're giving Misfits a run for their money for best team in EU. It's just funny because it's totally different styles, right? Misfits are pounding people in the early game. G2 are doing that as well, but with a completely different strategy, putting all of their resources into perks. This man stepping up, Wonder 2, just staying alive in those side lanes, making it happen. It is going to be one hell of a comeback if H2K can, can make it happen. We've seen the make comebacks happen before. I remember a Fnatic game last right. split. This is how Shook dies. Basically, Wonder hits him with his giant ball of stats really, really hard. Perks also hits Promise Q with all his stats. The call into the face, baby. It's pretty, pretty tough to play against. It's very difficult to play against, especially since you can't really catch that single person out too easily. It's someone like a Lucian or a Kaiser, they're very mobile when they get into a, a team fight. You've got the ability to go invisible, the ability to dodge around. It's so difficult to actually lock them down. And if you don't have point and click, then you can't really kill them before they kill you. Indeed. And now I think we have to ask for H2K, like, what, what do they do, right? You know, they didn't yeah. get that early advantage we, we wanted to see out of them. 
it, they lost their inhibitor already. They're not going to win in the early game. So you have to literally stall for as long as you possibly can or get kills in the bot lane. Go for four man bot. Pointless Q does not hit the bindings. Smitty J there with the chase as well. Soul Shackles used. And Wonder will go down here. He's buying time though. Here comes G2. Pux is on his way. Wonder down first. Will Pux go for this engage? It's a 4v3. No TP on Yarnan either. Decides just to uh, come back towards the wave here. Pointless Q misses the binding once again. Put selfie on his way down though. Doesn't have the Predator, instead went for the Electrocute this game, so we'll find it slightly harder to join fights. And as you said, Yana no TP, but he's still up towards that top lane. I really wanted G2 to fight that. I wanted to see just what this Lucian could do. Black Shield, of course, gonna stop that, but we did. Being yeah, in this, trouble. Uh, this is what Sheriff can do, but he goes oh, way too hurts. deep. Hurts. Able to flash away from the stun. Smitty J exhausted up as well as G2. Look oh, at the fight. Shuck. Shuck jumps in, gets a two man kick, but it's not enough as Perks calls him in the back. Promise Q and Smitty J going low as well. Yankos with the flash forward. Winter Spike misses Sheriff because he flashes away. Sheriff trying to turn it back around, but the blue buff is now not on his side. Gonna life steal off it a little bit. But what? There's also a fight G2 going on inside do, H2K's say, base. Wonder teleported oh. into the base here. Selfie somehow winning what? out the trade. Selfie comes up huge in the top lane. There's so many things happening on the map. There's a split push in the top from Yarn and Wonder. Selfie, they're duking it out inside H2K's base. And H2K themselves as a unit, they're just barely holding on in that fight, disengaging from the madman that is Perks. Perks is just in such a strong position now, almost at that black cleaver being funneled, all of this farm still. Selfie showed us that he can step up to the plate and make a key performance, but he's got to do that a few more times. Jay, he's happy fine. birthday, he's, he's in fine. the bush, he's fine. That was, it was rough, if he took one more step forward, uh, not going to look good for him. Have to remember though, Perks has no flash now, Yankos neither, so if they can catch out this Lucian, if they can get the counter strike on him or a binding or the Lee Sin kick, they can take him down. And so much of the G2 strategy does still rely on the Lucian being left alive. So what happens here? Okay, so uh, Selfie got some good stats too. Wonder's actually just running this entire time. If you're not auto-attacking on the Aatrox, you're not going to be regenning and makes it a pretty quick pickup there yeah. for Selfie. He did use his flash, but got a, got a decent shutdown onto Wonder. I'm building up towards that Rabadon's death cap next as well. Uh, Smitty J has the Trinity Force, so he has some stats behind his stats now to help with the stats. stat ball fight that we have going on. But that is starting away by G2. There's a ward outside That's this. Pure, perfect. H2K know this is happening. With Deard and Yanko stepping in that front line, stepping forward. They're the bodyguards. Promise Q there. Perks jumps in. Oh! Promise Q's gone. Wonder now is the only one left in the pit. Shook has to jump away. Teleport being used in here by Smitty J. Maybe looking for a bit of a Barney around the Baron pit. Selfie's in the mid lane. Smitty J there, hiding in the bush, but there's a ward on him. Shook willing to jump across the wall, Baron down to 3,000, Selfie is still not in his mind, but Sheriff is, he's oh, dead, and Wonder gets the shutdown kill, Shook Shuk, tries Shuk. to jump in, he no. doesn't the smite, because Perks puts G2 on his back once again, gets the double, cleans it up, and G2 destroy H2K. G2 don't even give up, they stay right in that pit, beat H2K down, playing around that objective, and just 20 minutes in, this hypercomp is so good at taking down the Baron. Really good stuff from there. You can see at the end, Shook's like, I have to do something. Oh, poor Sheriff. He's over it on the side by himself, trying to chip away. Wonder's like, what are, what are you doing, man? I'm getting in there. I'm pounding down Shook. 97 was so HP. close. And he had to smite right away. Otherwise, he was going to die to the damage incoming. A valiant attempt by him. But G2 are just too strong. Do you have to wonder where Selfie was during that fight, though? Was in the mid lane for a long time, deciding not to come across and join his team. Maybe his ultimate wasn't quite back up. Maybe just didn't in agree with the call that his team was making. It's a lose-lose, right? Because you go in, you team fight, you're going to lose the fight. You go in for a Baron steal, it's very hard down two levels as this Lee Sin against the Lucian. So Selfie didn't want to commit and sacrifice himself, but maybe they can pick up Yankos. We'll be able to jump aside with the stand beside me, and uh, Perks gets him to safety. G2 at the moment just in such a dominant position. 8,000 gold ahead, 22 minutes in. Black Cleaver finished on Perks. He's got a QSS now just to keep himself even safer. Hyanan with the Ardent Sensor. Looks like there's a locket of the Iron Solari on its way forward. Did G2 could go for a dive here. We saw a moment ago the teamfight damage. Wonder actually putting out a lot of work in this game. H2K, final stand you have to feel. Selfie has the Hemo Plague, no flash for him though. Post goes forward, Sheriff dodging to the side as much as he can, still only sitting at an item and a half on that Kaiser. Not far. Oh, oh, oh my god! Him. Oh my god!
But Perks does exactly what he needs to to open up this game for G2. Smitty J now trying to jump back into him, but Smitty J, even with the start, you cannot shut down Perks. Selfie in the midst of all of G2. He's done. Wonder gets the double. G2 get the inhibitor, and they're gonna take the base. They're charging on board. Shook is trying to be a hero, but it's not enough. H2K will fall as G2 has their eyes set on the Nexus. Too little, too late from Shook. H2K get demolished. Get another one. Pad that KDA, baby. One. He's a legend in the EU LCS. He's coming back for his title. Perks and G2 show us what they're made of. 4-0 in the first two weeks. The Nexus goes down, and G2 on attack. Outstanding. Outstanding performance there from G2. It started off at level one, playing the Funnel Cup aggro in the early game, beating Shook inside his own jungle. I appreciate Perks hugging Yankos there. I know Yankos is like, man, I, I contributed a lot with my 12 damage. Perks is, Perks is on top of the world right now. <laughs> I mean, we, we can mock Yankos a little bit, but he got to do what he needed. It might to not do. be fun, but it makes it happen. As a support main, sometimes you just gotta get the job done. Sometimes you just gotta sit by your AD carry and say, look, mate. I know you're going to try and in. I know you're going to try and kill yourself, but every now and again, I'll jump in front of you, I'll put up a shield, and I'll help you win the game. And that's exactly what Yankos and the rest of the G2 team did. Special credit as well to Wonder in that top lane was able to get the stats advantage over Smitty J. Yeah, it was fantastic play out of him. G2 really just focusing in, mastering, perfecting this strategy, and it shows. Because I think in the first week, it was maybe a little bit shakier than it looked today. Today, no mistakes, hardly, you saw out of them. And they're just gonna keep running with it, I feel like, until it doesn't work anymore. Until someone proves it's beatable. Like it or not, the funnel comp is what peak performance looks like, and uh, H2K on the other side, though, We'll be pretty disappointed with this game. We talked about how you beat funnel comps. We know how you beat funnel comps. Early aggressive jungling, early pressure on the map, and G2 just picked them apart. Just having a ward in the tri brush, having someone spotting out for Shook, could have changed so much in this game because all the momentum that he was supposed to have with that champion pick was just flown out the window as soon as he died at level one. And then they sort of got it back for a second. They almost did, did, right? He made that play that in the six. bottom lane. That was one of my favorite things to see in the game, honestly, was Shook making an aggressive and offensive play on that champion. But that was it. After that, G2 buckled it back in, took it to victory. All right, let's have a look at some of the highlights from that game, especially from Perks. This is brought to you by Acer Predator. And I, you, like, you I mean, which someone? ones, right? There's, There's so many. so many highlights from Perks. Some of his plays were absolutely beautiful. Secured this Baron for the team. Right. Perks jumps straight over the wall, blows Promise Q up immediately. I mean, I thought Yasuo was good in the last game. Lucian looked fantastic in this one as well. I think G2 as a team played this setup fantastically. They, they stopped Shook from getting in the pit for so long, waited until Sheriff stepped forward to engage this team fight and tear H2K apart. And Perks just stayed on the band when he needed to as well. You can oh. see Shook, so 97 close. HP. So maybe close. if they get that, they delay the game a little bit. Maybe they don't lose off the push, but... Oh! oh. Mm. You just can't do that mm. to a man. That was a culling one shot. You don't see that every day, and it didn't stop there because he jumps straight back in, has a QSS to make it so he can't get caught, and turns it around with Wondering Crew. And G2 all around. I think after seeing Misfits game today and after seeing G2's game today, I'm going to give first spot to G2, personally. I think they are slightly stronger all round. However, they have only really played one playstyle. But in the last game, you said Misfits are going to win the split. So. I said that, and then I saw G2. <laughs> okay, so okay. I think Misfits will win the split, because I think funnel comps, people will start to understand more. But at the moment, I think G2 are the better team. I just want to see Misfits match up against G2, take funnel against early Graham offense. Whew, that, that'll be fun. That will be a lot of fun. Now, remember to give us your play of the game at LOL Esports on Twitter. Wonder, Yankos, and Perks are your options. And please, 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 it's Yankos. Yankos did all the work. <laughs> what? Perks got the kills. Yankos did it all. He played a great Braum. He auto attacked to proc concussive he, blows. He flash queued a couple of times. That was pretty That's sweet. That's pretty good. He did get first blood. He helped out with the flash forward there. So. Well, we've got Pyrus standing by with your Polish perspective player of the game, Yankos. Let's hear what he has to say. 
Thank you very much, gentlemen. So, Yankos, you guys are absolutely on a tear right now, but things have changed a little bit for you. I have to ask you, how is it being a support main? Yeah, um, I mean, I guess when Miffy left, someone had to take over the support king role, so here's me. I'm the support king now. It's so boring, by the way, never playing support again in my life. <laughs> so maybe they'll let you take Smite in one of the future games. Do you, do you guys have a lot of different strategies prepared, or are you just doing this because this funnel comp is what's working for you right now? I mean, I believe that we have some other strategies prepared, but as long as it works and we feel like it's correct in certain games, then we just go for it. But I also have a message for um, Riot Games. Um, please just change the gold funneling strat so I don't need to play Brom again. But I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I really think it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I love the fact that you can play everything everywhere you want, and I love the fact that sometimes you can go for the gold funneling instead of normal jungle. I think it's fun. Maybe my team is just not being nice, and they are just douchebags, and they are just putting me on Brom every game. Maybe it's because of my team. I don't know. But yeah, it's just so boring sometimes when you are just sitting on stage and you are just like shielding people and like hitting minions. And I honestly don't know how a support players can play supports. Well, you're learning about what it's like. Now, you definitely made a few fans in the audience today. Yankos, let me, let me rewind it a little bit. Let's go back to your team right now, because the uh, fact of the matter is you're still four and zero. Do you feel like, because I've already asked Misfits, and they, they definitely feel the same way, do you feel like G2 Esports is the number one team in Europe right now? I mean, I feel like compared to last split, we improved a lot. And I feel like right now, we are way more together as a team. And um, it shows in our games for sure. Last split, we started 1-3. This split, we started 4-0. And um, I believe that we are the best team in Europe now. But we also play way different strategy than Misfits. I mean, they don't play as much the gold finaling one. And I believe we will face them in week four, so after Rift Rivals. So there's still like so much time. And um, I think the next patch will hit next week. So we'll see what will change. And I'm pretty excited to play Fnatic as well next week. I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, you guys still have to pick up that win against Fnatic. Are you, you feeling confident you get that revenge next week? I mean, I'm pretty sure if I play Braun, we will win, yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and Fnatic and Vitality will be up next, so do not go anywhere. You won't want to miss it. Here comes the teleport in from nice.